So I imagine the uh, gulper eel was something that pretty much uh, looked quite spectacular on on you know the first pouring into the tank. Yes, it's amazing. I mean, it, 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 the, it looks like a very long eel with a very big mouth. I mean, it, it's called the pelican eel, and and it, if you imagine the the uh, bill of a pelican, sort of without the pelican on it, <laughs> that's you're getting quite close to what a gulper eel is like. I've um, seen a photograph um, of it, John, and I've been watching your video, obviously now the, the today as well, and, and we'll put links up to that. But I, I mean, it is all mouth, isn't it? It, it is actually do you know it's um it's not a true eel although it's called an eel it's related to the true eels the eels are a really successful group of animals uh mostly all marine although there are some freshwater ones but all of them breed in the sea and uh an eel is basically a fish that's got very long and and a lot of its fins have, have condensed into the into the tail and it moves by waves going down its body rather than sort of flapping its fins. And that's an eel. So what is a gulper eel? A gulper eel is, is closely related, but it's got some adaptions for living in the deep. It's got no swim bladder, which is the thing that uh, adjusts Gives fish buoyancy. Exactly. And, and the reason it's got rid of that is because any air sac, uh, as you know, when you go down in the water, air is compressed and as you come up it's, it expands um so having an, any air cavity really is a hindrance to uh, deep sea creatures because they can sort of get wildly out of control with their buoyancy as they go up as the air expands so it's just got rid of it altogether in the gulp reel um there's a few other weird things it doesn't have any pelvic bones and so they think the reason it's this shape is that actually um, it doesn't eat big fish, although it could get its mouth around things that um, are bigger than itself because its mouth distorts like a boa constrictor. But it, it probably is, is eating shrimps of various sorts and it might even be filter feeding them in that its mouth is very big and like a big sack, almost like a blue whale. We put it in a filming tank which is something called a chrysal, which is um, a round tank which has a water flow which, uh, which stops the animals from sticking to the front of the glass and you can f look at it and film it properly. And uh, the mouth is so black, it was the blackest black thing I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, you'd, you'd have thought there was nothing blacker than black, but <laughs> oh my goodness, that was. It's that sort of velvety black inside its mouth. And that presumably is, is you know, when it has its mouth open underwater, nothing sees it coming. Um, I think it's probably important to say that the mouth isn't always open because I've seen some video of it where it, it is more eel-like. So the, the mouth must extend in some way so that this pelican ship mouth can gape open yeah. or be entirely yeah. hidden. I mean, I think, you know, that was from the Nautilus thing recently. You could see that the mouth was closed. Uh, and that's right. Its mouth can shut, of course. Um, and um, whenever we see these creatures, they're probably in trouble because they're probably caught in a light. Um, it's not their world at all. They don't live in the light. They live in the dark. So the way they think it hunts is they it kind of curls its tail over its head. And its tail is very long and thin. And has a bioluminescence, a glowing lure on the end of it. So it dangles this tail over the top of its mouth. I think it keeps its mouth open because its mouth is so, so black when it's in its prey hunting mode um, and then presumably shrimps and things drift into it. It doesn't have very big teeth, it's only got serrations on the edge of its mouth, there's nothing big about it. It, it, it is truly adapted to that environment, isn't it? Down, down deep, in the dark, huge cavernous mouth to try and catch prey that's passing by, a, a wonderful whip-like tail with uh, is it pink bioluminescence that it dangles in front of its mouth? And as you say, this deep, black, cavernous mouth. I mean, you just wouldn't want to run into it if you're a wee shrimp, would you? No. <laughs> no. But So that was it, you know, knowing 
how uh, amazing this was and that I was privileged to see it. And uh, it's been fascinating listening. Uh, you've done lots of diving and lots of floating across the world, and that's certainly something that we return to in future podcasts. <laughs>